Welcome back, everyone. I am so excited to be able to introduce this guest on the It's Bigger Than Me podcast. When I met this woman um, at my church, Patrice Murray, it was one of those, we just started like having a conversation as if we knew each other like from forever. And it was like our, our souls and our spirits just instantly whoop, came together like magnets. And it's just been amazing. So I'm so excited to have her on here. She has an incredible um, bio when it comes to being a successful businesswoman, having such a deep heart for the Lord, um, and just wearing her heart on her sleeve and just telling it like it is. And you're going to find so many guests that I bring on here do that. And there's going to be things that get brought up. And I just encourage you to have an open mind because the more we can have open discussions, the better. We were actually just talking about this. Patrice is saying, hey, can I share this or that? I'm like, go for it. Because when we have to hide things that are important to us or impactful to us, then it starts to gain power in the wrong way. So we don't want any of that. We're an open book here. So Patrice, I would love for you to go ahead and share a little bit about yourself because you have just... I mean, gosh, you're who you are and what you do is absolutely amazing. So please share and let the audience know who you are. Oh my gosh, Molly, what a privilege to think that, you know, when you go to church and they turn around and said, greet someone, we, we, I mean, that's how it started. So don't ever miss that opportunity in church. I feel so privileged. And the minute I met you, I didn't know you did girl power. I knew you were a boss lady. I'm like, she's the boss and I want to know you. So I love being here. Thank you. Um, and basically, you know, there's a lot to say, but I'm going to narrow it down to this. Um, I wasn't raised in a Christian home, became a Christian in fourth grade. And literally that changed my life. I actually really did remember receiving Jesus. And um, at the same time, lived in a dual world through high school and college, went to UCLA, with, grew up in Northern California. All I wanted to be was an actress, came down because I wanted fame, fortune, and a hot prince, and I wanted the perfect life. And I pursued it. And Jesus was kind of, you know, didn't take the wheel. <laughs> he was mm -hmm. kind of in the back seat, except for when crisis hit, right? And so I had it, I'm it, I'm the boss lady, I'm gonna pursue, I'm driven. Um, and through that, um, uh, realized that Hollywood was corrupt and black back then had a Harvey Weinstein kind of situation when I was in uh, a freshman at UCLA guy invites me over producer to read his script and he's in a robe and literally I'm like but I didn't um, do anything I wasn't desperate to do anything I'm pretty strong in in that so said are you kidding me left but it it shocked my world so instead of being an actress which I am, you know, people would think I was more animated and an actress. I ended up being an accountant <laughs> Wow! because I had so much college debt. My mom died in it when I was at UCLA suddenly. And so the trajectory of being a party girl, cheerleader, all about me wanting to be an actress, you know, wanted all the attention um, changed when my mom died. And I walked around the UCLA campus going, where did she go? I, I I believe in Jesus and I read the Bible and a verse here, but I had no context of who God was or anything. And so literally had so much college debt, pursued accounting, went and got a, a, um, a job, all God's grace on, you know, a fraternity brother said, you know, there's interviews on campus. I'm like, really? I really was a party girl. And so as God, only God can do, took me on a trajectory to go through pain at a young age. And I think sorrow and suffering is one of our greatest gifts. Jesus wept. And I think we under um, uh, miss it and we want to get through it or avoid it or medicate it. And it's actually been a tool in my life that I'm like, God's trying to get my attention. And every time he has brought hard hardship, Romans 8, 20, he's worked it together for good. So that's sorrow and suffering walking around the UCLA campus going, wait, I don't care if I party. I don't care if I make out with my boyfriend. Where is my mom? <laughs> and so I, um, life got very serious, left, became an accountant um, at a big accounting firm, hated it because I'm an actress and I have more emotion than, you know, want to sit there and do accounting. But it was God, Moses in the wilderness for 40 years learning how to be a shepherd because those skill sets were going to take him to lead his people. So he was a leader. He was born into royalty. He was going to be obedient. And so nothing in our life is missed. And so 
Fast forward, was an accountant, got an opportunity. I've always been bold, knew from the Bible from fourth grade that God loved me and had a purpose for me. And as I started to read the Bible in pain on my mom's death, I'm like, David didn't ask to be king. Moses didn't ask to be a leader. Noah didn't ask to build an ark. God pursues us. So as I was kind of moving up in my career in accounting and Hollywood, getting big, huge entertainment clients felt like I was a little star at the firm because I'm a hard worker and wanted to work hard. I would come home and I'm miserable going, God, I read the Bible and this is like, I hate my job and I don't get it. So because I knew the love of the father, I didn't quite know my identity. So made a lot of mess ups. Um, and filled identity with men or, you know, I have to be married. I have to have this. I have to have, be famous. I have to do this. And that took a, a lot of years to get to change that mindset. But I I had a heart to live free. And it really came from feeling like God loves me, is for me. I am a daughter of a king. And it's not equating to the world. And so it's really sweet how he kind of took me on that. So Fast forward, uh, as only God could do, I was on a client, I'm bold, I believe God, ask and you shall receive. I was on a client, I had a big account, Disney, the partner came out, I'm a little peon in my 20s, and he said to me, do you, do you like your job? So I'm like, you're a partner, like, I need this paycheck, I had tons of college debt. And I said, no, I hate it. You need to take me off. I have a good reputation at the firm. I'm moving up, but I hate it. He goes, what would you like to do? And I said to this guy, this is God. Because I trusted my identity and God's for me, I said to a stranger who could have like cost me my job, I said, well, I came to LA to be an actress, but I really love kids. I want to teach, but I maybe want to be a marriage and family counselor and I'm a Christian. So I might want to go to seminary. And I lay, and I told a partner at a big accounting firm, my heart. And he said, don't ever tell anyone else that. And I'm going to have you come work for me. And I go, what do you do? He goes, I'm in the entertainment tax group, uh, managing finances for wealthy individuals. I'm in my twenties, remember? And he said, come do that, but don't tell anyone. I said, but I, I don't know if I want to do that. I hate this. And I want to go be a teacher or an actress or something. He goes, I will let you work part-time. No one worked part-time. I'll let you work part-time and pursue those. You just can't tell anyone. Hmm. And so I got to... Then I started getting all these clients in entertainment. I left the firm, started my own practice, but I still pursued all those. I took classes. I, I asked the Lord. I took personality tests. And so for all those years, almost 30 years, I have been um, managing wealthy individuals, but pursuing my true purpose. So live free was out of a cry and a great story over the years of having too much wealth, too many houses, too busy. Um I, I married my high school sweetheart, got divorced, and I always thought a woman is married and bakes cookies and is child, has children. She's not a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. And then I'm a businesswoman. My career's taken off. And so identity was a huge thing because I'm th thinking, here, God's blessed me, and I feel you're blessing me, and I'm getting amazing clients. If I told you the list and the opportunities, it'd be amazing. But I mean, it would be like a miracle. But it wasn't what I felt was my identity. So long story short, Live Free came out probably about 10 years ago of having a big life and not feeling fulfilled and didn't feel like I was really doing my true purpose. And I witnessed to clients, I taught Bible studies as a leader at church, but it was my true purpose. So I decided to unwind it all and that I wanted to teach people, not only wealthy people, but um, Young, uh, young people. So I wrote financially free. I wrote coffee table books called remember, because I kept seeing in the Bible, we need to remember to know our identity and words to the wise, because I really wanted to motivate people. And as I started to teach in churches and even secular setting business leaders, financially free with the gods telling them about the Lord, I realized that's how I'm an actress. I'm standing up talking to people, but I don't really want to do it on you know a television show. And so I didn't, I never gave up pursuing what I loved and now God has molded all together. I've never been happier. I feel like I've solved it and I live free. And that was my motto. I said, I want freedom. I'm dying on the vine. I have responsibility. I have people, I have staff, I have all these people to answer to. I couldn't take a week off. I couldn't go sit on a beach and just, and so that was my vision. 
I want a life that I can still use my gifts and my talents to honor God and to be an influencer in the world. I'm super strong, like I was in my 20s. And I believe ask and you shall receive. And, but I wanted margin. That's a big word in my life to be able to, you call and I say, I'd love to do a podcast, but I run a company and I can do this and I can write books. I needed time. So live free and, and freedom in Christ was the ticket that was my focus to go. I'll keep this. I'll unwind this. And here I am today. Oh my gosh. There's so many wonderful things about your story. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, in such a condensed time of just that timeline of where, where you wanted to be, where you ended up, somebody giving you a chance and then where it's led you. And I love the fact, some of the things that I feel like would be just so powerful to really dive deep on is I love the, obviously the concept of living free. So many people want to have success. They want to have the money. They want to have the lifestyle. They want to have all the things. And I remember the, the first time we got together, you invited me over to your home. And when the beautiful home, absolutely stunning, gorgeous, beautiful. And you were sharing with me, you know, I've lived in the fancy neighborhoods. I've lived next to these people. I've done the things and da, da, da. And it's, you know, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Don't really like my neighbors. Don't really care for the neighborhood. It's not what everybody thinks. And you started to really shift perspective of, wow, I didn't know that because people don't talk about it. So people are like, this is what I want, but they actually don't really know because the people who are there aren't sharing like, well, here's what it is and here's what it's not. I, but your transparency of what it is that you've been able to accomplish and have and being like, mm, no, I want to keep this, unwind that. I would love to be able to, you know, really speak to the people who may need to do some unwinding in their life because so much is like, maybe they had a business and it took off and it's turned on to be this whole big thing and they have no freedom to go, hey, I can do coffee. I can spend time with you and do things that really matter and pour into relationships, which really is what matters at the end of the day. Um, yes. So I remember sitting at your 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 table eating breakfast, by the way, that she made from scratch. She made muffins <laughs> from scratch. She made breakfast from scratch. Everything was like so perfectly polished from scratch because you're a person of excellence. And I was like, oh my gosh, I think I had like seven muffins. I don't know. They were so good and all <laughs> natural, organic, and delicious. But here's this woman, so successful, inviting me into her home. No problem. Come in making breakfast from scratch i was like wow as a guest in your home i felt it was unlike anything else i ever felt it really was like wow this is definitely how i would i am going to be treating people from now on when they step into my home so they can feel that and you've been able to unwind things to get to that point so talk about that unwinding a little bit but i had to paint that picture because I'll tell you that breakfast was delicious and I felt so loved and still feel loved to this day from you. Okay. What I love. So I, you're so sweet. And I loved having you in my home. It was so fun. So one of the priorities, I mean, one of the things I realized is God is for me and God loves me and I can create my life. I'm not, I don't have 500 kids. I'm not disabled. I don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. I had debt in college, got out of it. I, I don't have a husband who t dictates to me. So there is something about freedom, married my high school sweetheart, had a big, you know, scarlet letter about divorce, which it wasn't my choice. I, you know, I don't believe in divorce. I honor marriage. I marry people. I have a house with a chapel. My other house, you didn't see with a chapel. I marry so many people because I love marriage. I love families. I love kids. And I think if I can't have them invest in the people who I love love and I love kids. So if I don't have them, but God wants me to invest. And I love being an auntie. And I feel like it's the barren woman who has all of the quiver full of, you know, great stories. And so I think when we take our eyes off ourselves, but what happened is I literally had a huge house, had was sitting there and teaching classes and I had all these clients and I had an overhead that was so large. And I sat down and I go, I can't even sit on it. I can't even quit. I can't even give a two week notice. And so I literally thought, but God, you're for me. And I teach him financially free. When you get into a mess and you get into a terrible relationship or you get, God doesn't want you to stay broken or stuck. He actually has freedom. So that word I said, but God's about freedom. Jesus died to set the captives free. Mm -hmm. So my slogan kept saying to set, I want to set the captives free one heart at a time. And I'm like, before I can do that, I have to do my own. 
So I said, Patrice, get on your big girl pennies. Don't sit here and whine. A lot of people, when they get messes, commit suicide, start medicating, start drinking, start having double eyes. I knew scripture too well. I loved scripture and I knew it too well. And one of the things I do is I love the church and I didn't want to be hypocritical. I didn't want to be, you know, teaching on Sunday and, and literally how, so I'm like, I got to be consistent. I got to model it. God is worth it. And when I think when we focus on God and the word of God, which is Jesus in the flesh, if we know the word, we can accomplish anything. I'm not even talking about the power of this Holy Spirit and miracles parting the Red Sea. God just says, show up. David showed up to be obedient, to bring his brother bread and food on the front line. And because he had been excellent as a shepherd, obedient to his father, obedient to his skill, because he loved God, that he had a slingshot and he managed, he was able to be used in a nanosecond to do it. So that's when the idea of margin. And I said, I actually am a good accountant. I actually love order. I love numbers. I boss men. I mean, I boss like there's a lot of successful people. I'm like, they, no one's strong enough to stand up to these people, right? I, I told you I just met Trump and I just bossed Trump. And that was a vision God told me. I was being still and God said, you're going to meet, um, you're going to meet Trump. I'm like, wow, how's that going to work? A year ago, I told a friend, God just said, I'm going to meet Trump. Had no clue. It worked a couple weeks ago and I literally bossed Trump. I'm like, I have a word for you. I'm going to pray for you. And tell the Secret Service, I'm not leaving until I'm done. He's like, oh, my God, I have to go on stage. I'm like, it's okay. I am with you right now. And I, like, I wasn't even intimidated because I knew it was of the Lord. So back to that, I was sitting in this big house saying, I can't even whine. I said, no, you can't. With the Lord, you can do anything. He wants freedom. You, in chasing identity and all the wrong things, money versus God, you can unwind. You can unwind. So you, it took me a lot of years. And then as I unwound, what I teach in Financially Free, if someone comes to a seminar or reads my book, they're all, I want to be a teacher. I have hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. And I said, okay, that's just one piece of a financial plan. Who are you? They're all, excuse me, I don't I can't think of who I am. I got debt. I'm like, no. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? He came to say, you're free today. So Satan wants you to feel bound forever, ever. That debt is one piece and there's steps to easily do, but you have an idea. Who are you in Christ? She goes, I want to be a teacher at Mariner's day school. And she has all this. I'm like, then you need to pursue that. And as you're pursuing that one step, you make a call, you make a schedule. So one of the values that's important to me is we all have 24 hours in a day. The Hebrew word for day in Genesis one is yom. God created things in 24 hours. He wants us to create in 24 hours. He, 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 he created in our time span because he wants to. So I say, people, you have 24 hours, break it down to honor God first, to be still with him, to know the word. That's the most important thing. And then after that, it's God first, the word of God, prayer, you know, being still to hear. And then after that, it's the priorities that he would want you to be a lover of others to be a high integrity character in the world. So if you got in debt, no, you're not going to just blow it off. You want to pay it back. And so I would, you know, I, so I listened to myself teach. I'm like, I just got to do the thing. So what's first. So I wrote a whole plan and literally it took me like 10 years to unwind my life. Wow. Started to figure out what clients, how to sell houses, what clients I could keep that I could get rid of staff. I had to reduce my rent, but it was diligence but not at the sacrifice of 24 seven. I honor the Sabbath. I've never worked weekends. That's clients would call and I say, no, I started to think of practical ways I could unwind a very complicated life. And a lot of it along the way was ego. I realized the money I was making was because I wasn't married with kids. And I'm like, no, if I really believe Lord, I'm, a, I'm, I'm okay. I don't need to say I'm not, I'm divorced and I don't have kids and I have to be a bomb businesswoman. No, that's a lie. I want to have time to really bake cookies. So one of the things I have to tell you back, I have always worked, I've had multiple homes and I've always worked for my home. So my clients, one of the things I'm like, I'm not trying to brag, but I just want to do it. 
I didn't buy the lie that I had to have this impressive office in Newport Beach and, you know, wear this thing. I'm like, no, I want to show them I'm a child of the king. I love hospitality. That's always been a high priority. I've always had my offices. I've had my clients come driving limos into my houses and making them afternoon tea and making them dinner. And that has been for people who pay for people or go to nice restaurants. That has been my touch, my, my girl power touch, because I can be feminine and warm and still be a boss lady. And so that model for you, I do for everyone. Cause I'm like, I am a homemaker. So back to my mom being a homemaker and feeling like I, you know, wasn't a good woman by not by being in the home. I'm like, Patrice, you love, you want to be a housewife. So just mold that what mm. is important to you into what God's given you. You cannot, Moses, Moses didn't want to be a shepherd. He wanted to be a king, but he had to be a shepherd and shepherd made him be the leader of God's people. So one of the things I did is I'm like, I'm, I took an inventory. I actually like, why do I like accounting? And where does that fit into how God made me? Because Ephesians 2.10 changed my life. God gave me a purpose before I was born. It's not your purpose, Molly. And the next thing I thought is we all have the same economies. God's our provider. We all, you have 24 hours. I have 24 hours. Einstein had 24 hours. Michelangelo had 24 hours. They didn't have 48 hour work days. We had the same. So I'm like, wow, I can by myself accomplish. There's a lot, Oprah, you know, Bill Gates, all these people who don't have Jesus accomplish a lot in 24 hours because they're passionate. But with Christ, now I have the Holy Spirit to multiply it. The only thing that a Christian, I mean, the only time a Christian doesn't multiply that 24 hours in the powerful that God, Moses couldn't in 24 hours part the Red Sea and let billions of people walk through, is we have the Holy Spirit. So what I started to say, wait, I, Bill Gates and those guys, I'm sorry, they're not Christians, so I'm just going to call them out. They're not Christians and they accomplish more than you're accomplishing you have the power, start operating in the power. Mm. So I looked to see the steps I was taking was biblical, was honoring to God. And then Molly, I know I'm talking so much, but what happened is when I did my part, because God's always about relationship, but Noah had to build the ark or he would not have been, he wouldn't have survived. And it took him 120 years. So I said, I don't care how long it takes me to wine. I'm not going to get discouraged and I'm not going to make it be a burden that I'm going to have a 10 year plan and lose today. Today's beautiful and a gift. So I'm going to honor God. I'm going to balance my life. And all of this mess I have to wipe is going to be a part of it. I'm still going to do Bible study. Once I had a vision, I then had more joy because it wasn't what Satan wants to tell us. You will never get out of it. You've made such a mess. Just give up. I know the word of God. Oh, there's so many good things in there. And a couple of things that I really want to highlight through that beautiful, just story of what God's brought you through. And you can just hear the joy that she has, right? Like she's gone through things. She's worked through it. Like she's, here's what it is. A couple of things that I really want to be able to highlight for all of you that are listening or watching this, if you're watching the recording is number one, it took her 10 years to unwind. So often we get so caught up in watching everybody else and like, oh my gosh, they have the life that I want, the, the words that I want, the family, the husband, the whatever that I want. You do not know what the back end's like. And you, you shared that. Like that is so key. It's like the comparison is going to kill you and steal your joy. Yes. And everybody's on a different journey. What do I need to unwind in order to get to where I want to be and have the Lord, like you said, I wrote this down, uh, start operating in the power. Like you have the power, so start operating in it. So and we all years, have the power. We yeah. all have, the, correct. We all have the power. So I love that you said that because it's so true. And we do not, there's so much small thinking and safe living that's out there that we don't even scratch the surface of the power. Yeah. And so that 10 years of unwinding to some would be like, that feels like forever. And I'm never going to be able to get there when you're like, you know what? You probably didn't sit there asking yourself, or if you did, you didn't do it very often. How long is this going to take? How long is this going to take? How long? You're just like, whatever I got to do to get there. And having that, like, we're going to get it done until it's done. And you have always, ever since I've done, you've always had that, like, we're just going to, we're going to go do it. We're going to go do the thing. And I'm not going to have any obstacles stand in my way. And I'm going to partner with God to do it. So 10 years, people, 10 years. So important for you to, to sit on that because so often we think that it's supposed to be like this and it's most yeah. of the time not. 
And then the second thing, oh, I love this. I can just envision it now because I've been in your home. Not the one with the chapel, still got to go there. But <laughs> I've been in the home that you're speaking of, of so I can just envision limos pulling up, the beautiful home that you have come in, tea, like, how amazing is that? It's like, everybody can put on the show. Look at me, look at me. You're like, I want to serve. And I yeah. want to focus on that part that you choose to open up your home. The way you even designed the home that you have to have it be so comforting, homey, uh, just inviting for people to come in and stay. It's like, you choose to serve. You could go, you know, show them the whole, like, here's Pelican Hill or here's this. Yeah. Here's, like all these beautiful yeah. things because we live in Southern California, but you don't. Yeah. You said, I want to serve you on so many different levels. And that really brings such a, obviously a Christ-like element, a human element. I see you and I want to have this, you know, like really like get to know you and have that connection, which yes. obviously pours into how successful that you have been. And I love that. So I want to talk about that serving piece right there, because again, so many people want to put on this dog and pony show of like, yes. look at me, I have all these things and blah, 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 da, 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 da. like at the end of the day, human beings want authenticity like who are you really like even yes. people who make millions and billions of dollars yeah they still love those things at the core at the end of the day and you're yes. willing to be like here's where I'm at here's where I live let's have this conversation maybe there's yeah a billionaire walks in and they they still they still got to eat they're still a human being they still yes. eat bread but you don't change you have that servant heart and mentality and I love that and I would love to know just you know, just so many people in business that sell, 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 impress, impress, impress. But you come from such a, a servant heart and foundation. Anything else that you'd like to share when it comes to that? Because that is something that's so beautiful about you. I love it. And that actually ties into what I want to share is one of the things I want to say in that 10 years, and I teach us in Financial Free. And it really, I, I think I, the one thing I want to express to, to everyone listening God is the God of the impossible and of miracles. And so when Moses was faithful and took him out of Egypt and he's against the wall, he didn't go, there's a wall, there's the Egyptian army. I must have heard wrong. No, he told everyone, be still. The Lord will fight for you, you must be still. He had no clue. There was no precedence of the Red Sea parting. I can't read the word of God and not think that if God worked in most life, the word of God is Jesus. It's true. So I would teach in financially free people would stand in line to come up to me after a seminar and they're all, I have a kidney disease and I have $11,000 worth. And both my husband got laid off. Like this was in 2009 or so. And I got, you know, and the economy was terrible, worst recession we've seen so far. And my husband got laid off. What should we short sell our house, whatever. And I literally would have the same formula I did for myself, same formula, I, right? Who, who is God? If you, did, if you had a hundred million dollars in the bank, what would you do? Mm. Well, I, I'm a marketing person. I love it. And I had a big job at a big company and this person's older. This person has health problems. They're not as put together as, you know, the people that we want to see that are, um, um, beautiful and stuff. They were not anything, you know, I think what they described Jesus, not anything that, you know, you would look upon. And I sat there. And when I asked that question, because I do believe in the power of God, I listened to it and I went home kind of sick to my son. I'm like, God, do I give them money? And I thought, I, I and then I stopped because I made a vow, Patrice, you're already minimizing the power of God. You want to be the fix. Mm. And I I remember praying for this particular person and I would say to everyone, you're overwhelmed with debt. You don't know the power of God. You need to just for a week, we'll figure out how you're going to get a job and pay your bills. And if you should start out, but I'm not going to give you the answer for one week. I want you to go home and spend an hour in the morning praying with God, being still to listen and writing in your journal who you are, what you think if you had a hundred million, what you would do. So she did it. And I said, and then be doing if 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 that if there's eight hours a day and you're not working, four hours spend time doing that, and then six hours be looking for a job. Do your part. God's not gonna bring a prince to my door, you know, necessarily. I gotta be doing my part. Yeah. And so um a week later, and I, I mean I could tell you 50 million stories like a week later, and I went home sick, like there's no way, like this is impossible, bigger than the Red Sea. There's no way in this economy. 
based on her age. I mean, I just literally all in the human flesh thinking, um, you know, because I'm a little bit of an activator and I'm a fixer and I can get things done and I have to pull back to go, God, this isn't a Patrice fix. This is a you fix. She came back. She goes, you're never going to believe it. I'm like, no, I probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> the bomb job, bigger than she had before, like a New York, a big ad age. I mean, it was like, uh, and that changed my life. Like I was so humiliated. She never knew any of my heart issue. I was so humiliated that I ever doubted. And that really in knowing scripture and then seeing that going, I will never doubt and it can happen to me. And so um, I think what it is in those 10 years, what I did that gave me joy is it was the journey, those stupid phrase. It's the journey, not the end result. I actually saw that in scripture and believed it. So I was had I and this is one of the steps in financially free. I had a parallel path. So I was writing books. I started to write motivation books. I had a, created a cloth in China that I think could still be big, but God didn't want me to make money on a product. I started writing my, I had a financially free book. I started writing my other one. So while I was unwinding my day life, because I had my purpose, God given Ephesians 2.10 that God created me to do at night, I would write books at night. I would create. So I had motivation to unwind and do it really efficiently to be who God created me to be. So parallel paths in that year is again, like I said to her, you have debt. You don't have a job. You're about to lose your house. But she, in a week, gave it to the Lord, rested, walked, there is bounce. So we all have three things. We all have 24 hours. So one of the first steps that was important to me is we have T3, time, talents, and treasures, money, mm -hmm. houses, and money. I teach in Financial Free. You have a chair. And would you ever leave your house, Molly, and not brush your teeth? I hope not. Ever. I, I've never thought. So that became so secondary. I, I, I don't watch television or eat at on the floor. I, I sit in a chair. Chairs and toothbrushes are as important to me as money. They're tools to get my life to fulfill my purpose. So when you put money in the right perspective and you believe that God can part the Red Sea and wants to do it in your life, you you start to give way, you start to trust your identity, David before Goliath. He's 17 years old, but he knew who, he said to Goliath, who are you to challenge the God of Israel? So he, one, defended God, and two, he said, no one is better. I've killed lion, and two, no one is better with this slingshot. And King Saul's all, okay, whatever, go in peace. <laughs> 17 year boy taking on Goliath, shaming thousands of men. So those, again, those Bible verses count. Oh my gosh, that woman listened to me tell her scripture and the power of God showed up. So in those 10 years, Molly, it became not a drudgery. It became a motivation to unwind the lie and the things of the world. And as at the same time, as I believed God and partnered with him in who I really was, he multiplied it. He brought divine appointments and it would probably would have taken 30 years in my strength. And the 10 years weren't wasted. It was a parallel path. That's one of my steps in financially free because mm. then you're motivated to get out of debt. If you yes. think you have no hope, have you seen this viral guy? Um, have you seen, heard the song by Oliver Anthony? Okay. I'm, I'm going to send it to you, but anyone listening, Type into type type into YouTube Oliver uh, Oliver Anthony. He literally three weeks ago he wanted to commit suicide. He was an alcoholic and he was so depressed. And he knew oh, yes, 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 that one. Of course, the red the red bearded guy with the banjo. He's offered ten million dollars. He literally got on his knees that night and said, "God, help me if you will help me." And then he goes, "I'm so sick of being a loser." I've got, and he put his song on YouTube and a radio station beat up. So he did his part, but he prayed that Oliver Anthony's story is exactly what live free and financially free is about. Yes. You get up, you believe God. And in three weeks, no one could do that without God. Oh gosh. And I wasn't recognizing the name at first. And I was like, wait a second. It's the viral guy that's going around right now that has the song that everybody resonates to of what we're going through as a country period. So, and, and it's just the, the power of 
there's so many different ways that I want to go about this. But first of all, right now, the power of prayer, it's like you, you got this opportunity. Okay, Lord, what do you want? What do you say? And I had this um, revelation actually this morning that I think really even ties in with this. It's like, if you had the opportunity and you're a business owner, you're creating a business, you're, you're kind of in the beginning stages and you could sit down with a fortune 500 CEO and they could give you the strategy, the this, the that, would you do it? Uh, yeah, probably would because they're, you're going to learn something. There's wisdom there, strategy there, all the things. Yes. Why do we treat God any different? That's right. Why do we treat God any different than that Fortune 500 CEO? When God created that Fortune 500 CEO, the strategy, the wisdom, everything that was bestowed upon that person. But yet we want to go to somebody in the physical rather than like, Lord, what do you say? And because yes. we're waiting for that, like, gimme, gimme, gimme. And people are waiting for the next, the next, the next in their business, their life, their whatever. And, but they're not spending time in the prayer closet. They're not submitting it and giving it to the Lord. Yes. And the part that I love that you said, and the older I get, the more I'm like, so in love with this too. It really is the journey. Like the journey is the valuable part, the end result. Yeah, that's great. We've been working really hard towards this. Oh, amazing. But it's the person that you become is the beautiful piece. Yes. That needs to be that diamond that the Lord gets to show off of look what happens. Look what happens. And I'm going to give you everything of your heart's desire, but there's going to be refining like a diamond has. There's going to be burning, yes. there's going to be crushing. There's going to be all these things that we have to get rid of first these impurities in order to come in and have well only what I can create as I'll say air quotes perfect uh, yes. in him only period and people are that's so like you said so cliche when you actually go through it and you see yourself refine in a journey season which is, life is all about a journey but especially through if you go through a wilderness season or an unwinding season right yes goodness gracious you will come out and you'll be like I wouldn't change a thing as hard as it was in the, in the, in the thick of exactly. that, I could not change a thing exactly. and that joy gets to exude those stories, the, the mentorship that you can now share with other people of what you've gone through. Um, it's just amazing. And I know every time I, I hear and listen from you, Patrice, I'm always just like, oh my goodness, Lord, I just love the people that you are putting in my life because it's so amazing just to see the miracles that happen, to be a witness, to be a listening ear, to learn. And I wasn't always that way. I used to be the like, yeah, I don't really need to, I, I got it. I don't really need to listen. I don't need to learn. I don't need to do anything. a lot of pride and ego, right? Which really was a protection of, I just don't know. I don't know who to yeah. listen to and what. And the yeah. Lord's like, listen to me first. And now he's opening up the door of other people because you have to be picky and choosy of who you listen to. You yes, for sure. I have an opening ear to everyone. So, um, gosh, this is so amazing. I know we could be on here for a couple hours, but as we're wrapping up this, I would love to hear if there's anything else that you would love to share just along this, you know, whatever, whatever comes to mind, because there's so much wisdom from you, Patrice. And I hope that people are really, you know, gathering this, like absorbing this. If you got to listen to it again, go do it. Like you better be taking yes. notes because there's so many good things in here of when you are learning from people who've been on a journey, who have what you want, they're submitted to the Lord key, super key, yes. because people are now really seeing a difference between worldly wisdom and kingdom wisdom, right? Like godly right. wisdom. And we, we need it in the and we need it in these days more than ever. And Molly, every word you said, I love. And again, we could speak hours because I want to comment. But the one thing I would say is really when I think of where we've messed up our life, Eve ate the fruit and she was perfect. Sin hadn't entered. But the minute she did, Satan comes to us the same way he came to Eve. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so when we're feeling condemnation and shame and I'm screwing up or I I'm not as good at the minute you have the jealousy and pride and hiding that's got to be especially for you listening if you are a follower of Jesus Christ you have the power of the living God your sin is destroying your life not Satan not God so sorrow and suffering God brings as gifts to absolutely bring us to the end of that ourselves so our sin is alive. So for instance, if you had a two-year-old kid and they were running out in the street and you didn't discipline them, they would die. You discipline them, you spank them so that they know consequence or they, they won't die. At the time, they're sad that you're spanking them and they don't comprehend. So we are not smarter than God. And the more I read the Bible, what you said is we have to, who we listen to, we have to test it. But that's why the word of God is universal. There's one book, not many ways. And we test it by being Bereans. 
Paul was teaching and he said, the Bereans are more noble because they listened to me and tested against the word. So one, we have to be in the word. We cannot know Jesus. We cannot know our identity because Eve was perfect, but there's an enemy. And the minute she listened to Satan, he says the same thing through, go read Genesis three, right? And see what Satan tempts her. Lust of the eyes that you can, you can know the future. Cause we all, well, if I know the future, I can control it. We're all control freaks because we live in a painful world. And so we try to avoid sorrow and suffering. So the one thing is our sin leads to sorrow and suffering. So instead of blaming God or people or sorrow and suffering, blame yourself because we have story of story. When Noah was righteous, it doesn't mean that he didn't have um, hard times, 120 years being made fun of, but he plods along because when you have your eyes on Jesus, you have power and clarity and identity. Secondly, we all have to know who we are. So I really want you guys to look at your schedule, see where you can have margin and freedom and you might not be able to unwind today, but at least identify because when you know, knowing leads to at least the better chance of accomplishing and then to repent, spend time going, where am I jealous? Who am I jealous of? Why do I think God is not enough and mm. he's going to do for her, but not for me. And, you know, there's friends of mine that um, can't go to baby showers or can't go to showers because they can't. And I used to be like that when I was younger and, you know, divorced. I go, oh my gosh, another person married. Why not me? When you know the word of God, you know, his economy and he's the provider. 5,000 people could get married. Doesn't mean that he can't do it today. Right. So you need to take your eyes off yourself and remember they have to be on him. You're not looking to your husband, your company, your boss, the economy to provide. Oliver Anthony got on his knees and in one day he was suicidal alcoholic and now he's on Joe Rogan and he actually is using his gifts. That That's biblical. That's Moses. That's Noah. That's David. That's Paul. That's Ruth. That's Esther. And then the last thing is Esther, Ruth were obedient. They did what they were told by wise people. Naomi by Mordecai, right? They went before the king and they went with humility. They weren't Eve who listened to Satan. So just remember obedience and not quick fixes and journey. There's everyone in the Bible. David at 17 was told he was, he was anointed by Samuel to be king. It took 13 years. Noah built the ark. It took 120. A story after story. And it's because in order for us to be our true person, me today is way better than I was 10 years ago. In, in humility and joy and freedom and identity, we have to go through the process. So, and then the last thing is, Molly, you and I are sisters in Christ and we are being blessed right now because we showed up to community. We turned around and I said to you, I want to make disciples. So I'm chatty with people. And we, if I had just gone, oh, hi, I'm too, you know, I don't need to talk. I just need to sit in church. No, we engaged and so God could do this beautiful thing today because we chose community instead of hiding. Eve and Adam hid. No one taught him shame. We're all hiding today. The minute you feel you're hiding, it's not of God. It's not your best life. It's shame. To live free means to be authentic, to be vulnerable. I just told you in the first five minutes, I'm divorced. I felt like a loser. But we can only know the hope when we really are honest with the mess. Oh gosh. It's so good. There's so many great points in there. And it's like, yes, it's, it's such a blessing to be able to hear just the wisdom from you. Like what, like how you process things, your perspective, your wisdom and scripture, because you've been in it for a very long time. You prioritize it. It's something that you don't just talk about, but you are about. And I just love that. So Patrice, this has just been an absolute joy and absolute blessing to be able to have you on here. I hope everybody that's listening um, has gotten so much just goodness from Patrice. And I'll definitely um, have in the, the show notes that ways that you can connect with her because she has a lot of different resources. She mentioned books and different things. And um, she's just a well, a, a well of information. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. It was an absolute just honor and pleasure having you on here. 
Oh, Molly, I adore you and love you. And thank you. What a gift.